words of adoration, words of love to him this morning.
done our behalf. Go ahead.
wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Lord. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. No other name I know. Oh, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Just want to greet everyone. Amen. Our pastor. Amen. And just about everyone. Amen. Everyone. 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 I want to greet you this morning in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Whether you are here, whether you are on Facebook, whether you are on Zoom, I want to greet you. I want to say praise the Lord. Amen. I want to say praise the Lord. Amen. His name is still worthy to be praised. And in everything we give thanks. Amen. And we bless the Lord today. Amen. This evening would have been at 7 p.m. would have been our prayer, but we're going to forego prayer. Amen. This evening. Amen. It's the 4th of July and I know some of you might have barbecues and what have you. Amen. So we want you to enjoy this evening with your families and your friends. Most people are celebrating tomorrow. Amen. But we just want to give you this time off. Amen. On Wednesday at 7 p.m., though, we resume with our Bible study with Bishop Scott. Again, I want to encourage you to be a part of that Bible study. On Friday at 8 p.m. is our youth and young adult session. Amen. And on Sunday, which is next Sunday, we will resume. Amen. With our Zoom, I know that we are probably getting ready to resume BAU business as usual. I don't know. Amen. But I leave that up to our pastor. Amen. So we invite you. All of these services are via Zoom. Amen. So if you will visit our Facebook page, you will see all of the Zoom meeting IDs and password. And when I get back to my seat, I will put them in the chat so that you will have them for those of you who don't have them. 
Amen. And just want to encourage you that it's offering time. Amen. I know sometimes because the new way of giving is very sad. Sometimes you forget. I forget sometimes. Amen. Because I'm in the service and all quarter. But I want to encourage you to give unto the Lord. It's more blessed. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. And I want to encourage you to give. Give up your, your tithing and your offering. Amen. That God will bless you. Amen. There's a blessing in giving, so you may do so via Zell at 914-987-4803, via Cash App at BAUC Apostolic, or via PayPal at paypal.me slash BAUC. Please give unto the Lord. Give unto the Lord. We make it easy so you don't have to worry about having cash, but you can just, you know, log into your, your accounts and give unto the Lord. Amen. So God bless you in your giving. Amen. May you have a blessed week with the Lord. May you feel and experience. I say that every, but I really, really mean it, that you will experience the presence of the Lord in a mighty way mighty way. Amen. May you, you feel God. Hallelujah. As you pray, let us remember to pray one for the other. Amen. Remember to pray for Sister Vanessa. Amen. I'm calling her Sister Vanessa because I'm claiming her in Jesus' name. She texted me this week and she requests prayer for her children. Amen. And a friend of hers. Amen. And we want to pray for her that God will deliver, that God will show up. There was a, a my brother Donovan called me um, that he had uh, one of his um, the members of his church, he and his wife and a baby was driving and they met in a fatal car accident the wife died young couple, they just got married probably less than six months ago and um, the, the wife died and the, the husband suffered a traumatic brain injury and I, I, whenever I hear these things, I guess because of what I experienced with my son, whenever I hear anybody goes to the Lord, the, there's something that tugs on my heart. And I said, I'm going to pray for him. I asked Donovan for his name and I, I prayed for him this week. And yesterday he called me, he said, Yvonne, guess what? They let him out of the hospital. I, and that's what I prayed for. I said, God, I pray that you will give him a speedy recovery. The doctors won't understand how he recovered because his, his, his future looked very dim. He couldn't remember. Uh, he, Donovan said that when they would go visit him, they would be talking to him one minute and the next minute he would ask them who they were. That's how bad it was. And somehow God just, just moved in and, and worked a miracle that he was able to go home. So there is power in our prayer. I'm not saying it's my prayer, God answer, but I'm also saying it's my prayer because that's what I prayed for. And when he called me, so I want to encourage you to pray one for the other. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Sister Tanisha, I call your husband's name in prayer every single day. And I'm not going to stop praying until I see him walk through these doors or some other doors. Amen. I'm going to keep on praying. Amen. I believe that there's, there's something about prayers of mothers and wives. I don't know. I'm not saying that husbands and fathers can't pray. But I believe that we who have that, that thing, sister, that, 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 that the womb, hallelujah, when we can reach down in our belly buttons and cry out to God on the behalf of his people, I really believe that God will show up. I really believe that God hears, I, I, I'm not saying he doesn't hear the men, but the, you know how we can cry, pray and cry when we can wail before the Lord? Amen. I want to encourage you to pray. Pray, 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 because God answers prayer. I said, God answers prayer. I said, God answers prayer. Whatever you're going through, you might not understand it. You might not have the answer you don't know, but I tell you, take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In Jesus' name, God bless you today. At this time, I'm going to ask the Pauline to come and greet us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And after Sister Pauline comes, amen, the next voice you will be hearing is that of our pastor. God bless them as they come. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord, everybody. Bless the Lord, everybody. Raise your hand and shout hallelujah. Raise your hand and shout hallelujah. Glory be to God. I love the feeling of the whole, the presence of the Holy Ghost. That's just resting upon, resting upon us. Amen. God bless you, B-A-U-C. I greet my pastor. 
praise God. Pastor Tyra will be. Praise the Lord. That sounds strange to say. I'm going to get used to it one day. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. But I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. And BAUC family, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. No other name I know. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. No other name I know. Praise God. And when you say that, it sends a sensation through my heart and through my soul. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. The presence of the Lord and the presence of the Holy Ghost is evident in here. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. This is the house of the Lord. We'll be gathered together and to worship and to magnify his name. Oh, with me. Praise God. And let us praise God. I greet you in accordance with Psalm 27 this morning. It said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? If anyone walk in this house this morning, with a tip or a bit of or a tingle of fear this morning. Yeah. Listen to this. The Lord is the strength of my life. Yeah. Of whom shall I be afraid? These are all questions. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Praise God. These are all questions. And the second verse says, when the wicked and even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and yeah. fell. Why? 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 Let's stand up on that reassurance of grace this morning. Let's stand up on that reassurance this morning. Let's stand up on that reassurance of grace this morning. That when the wicked and even your foes, ah, uh, God, come upon you, praise God, they will stumble and fall. In Jesus' name, our pastor, Pastor Tyrell will be. Let's greet him with a hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. I feel very much this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. I got a few things I'd like to do, I believe. There's a word on my heart that I'd like to, by the help of the Lord, amen, communicate. By the help Thank of the Lord. Amen. 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 Firstly, I'll greet everyone. Greet Dr. Paulie, Dr. Wilby. Amen. And um, all of our elders, Elder Antony, our ministers, our missionaries, the workers of Almighty God that are in the house this morning. Amen. Uh, to you, Elder Moshe, out there in Zoomland, we send a re greeting to you and Sister Moshe this morning. Praise the Lord. We praise God for everyone. You know, wherever you are, by whatever means, you're tuned in this morning. I believe that God knows exactly your location. Amen. And from here, he can beam out to you whatever you need this morning. Hallelujah. Now, why don't you go ahead and say thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. I'd like to say a word of congratulation to Sister Khadija this morning who had her graduation much this weekend, last weekend. Amen. Praise God. We are very proud when our kids do well academically. Praise the Lord. And so we, we will always, you'll find from this podium that we will always make mention of such. Amen. And so, you know, that's the one that I'm aware of. So if there's anybody else, amen. Tell us so that we can do that. Amen? Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. And then secondly, today is the 4th of July. Amen. Today is the 4th of July. And 4th of July means much for Americans. Whether you are born here or naturalized. Amen. We celebrate independence. The 4th of July, this country, this country became independent. Amen. On that day. And so we want to celebrate with them. You do notice that our, our, our veterans are setting up outside for the celebration. Amen. Amen. Praise you, the Lord. Um, when I'm through with my next two items, 
you're going to have to pray for me so I have enough strength and grace to preach. Amen? Amen. Today's the fourth, but on the 10th of July, 2019, which is going to be the 10th of July in a couple of days, all of you know the loss that we had. Praise the Lord. Sister, missionary, minister, whatever capacity she operated in, Cheryl will be. She did it well. Amen. We won't be here on the 10th, so right here on the 4th, I'm going to ask you to observe just a moment of silence in remembrance of such a fine, great woman of God. Amen. Amen. That has had an impact on the lives of many of our peers, and we will forever remember how she labored with love in the work of the Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Give God a praise for that. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God has a way of sustaining us. Don't you know that? You know that. Amen. Praise you, the Lord. God has a way of sustaining us. Amen. And so we want to thank God. On the 10th of September, 1990, I walked. I was already there. Because we made the arrangement for this occasion. And uh, I watched as God used those doctors to um, do what they call the cesarean thing. And, 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 and the face that I saw was the face of my second son. And the moment I saw him, I said he looked like my father, and if you wonder why his middle name is Newton, that was because I insisted that he should be called Newton, because he looked just like my dad. Well, the years have rolled on, and I'm using this occasion to highlight the fact that he has always been with us. This church has been through many struggles. Amen. But he has been with us. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I said he has been with us. Yes. Amen. And we will never forget the times that, you know, maybe voluntarily or by force. There were times when we had to take it by force, but Willingly, I would say, for most of it, he has labored with us in the vineyard for Almighty God. Uh, I, I believe the Lord will bless him. The Lord has already blessed him. He's been married to uh, my daughter, I call her, no in law for me. Amen. Christine. And if you hear me say Christine, it's because I, I make that name for her. It's special to me. Amen? Amen? So they got married and, you know, things have transpired and he has advised me and then, and I'm saying this and I'm feeling strong about, you know, not falling down, but a couple of weeks ago, God prepared me to deal with it because it, it, it's not one of those things that any father, any pastor would be able to sustain easily. He wants to move on. In other words, today is his last day as a part of Born Again United Church. Amen? And I, I, I kind of uh, say that, but I don't believe that that is the case because I believe forever he will be 
born again, because you can be born again alumni. Amen. Amen. So, Lord, amen. We have many of them, and every time I see them, one of the things that I have asked God to give to me as a pastor, whoever chose to leave by whatever, for whatever reason, I want to maintain a connection and a love for whoever leaves, that I can talk to you, you can call me, I can see you anywhere. And, and have the same feeling. Amen? Amen. Amen. I realize that we, we don't all have to go to heaven from born again. That's right. Uh, hear me, born again doesn't have any exclusive on going to heaven. Okay. We're just glad that God has privileged us to be a part of the many lives that he has used us to touch. And let me say this to Brother Duvain, we love you. He knows, he knows how much I love him. I don't have to tell him he, he knows. Amen. So we're gonna we're gonna dearly miss you, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. You wanna say something? Understand transition then, uh, but I, but I, I know that I felt something, and as I got older, obviously, uh, I've been a part of and witnessed a lot of transitions, and uh, it's never what what has been consistent is that transition is never easy. It's never something that. Um, should be even taken lightly or done with a, any type of hastiness or anything uh, impulsive. Um, so I say all that to say that um, this decision was not one that I made uh, with haste. I, I, um, I went before the Lord for a number of years, uh, I think probably since mm, 2013 ish, I've been having this conversation with God on and off. And, um, you know, obviously, we know things, a lot of things happen from that time to now that have greatly impacted our born again family. And um, I remember uh, I remember in 2019, at the top of 2019, I remember I spoke to my, my parents, my pastors, my leaders, um, about what God was dealing with me, you know, what he was dealing with me with and I uh, I told him that at the end of 2019, I would be I would be leaving Born Again, and I wrote a letter to them, and I never forget it. I I I, I specifically wrote that I didn't want to discuss it right away, and I needed some time to process. So I would ask them to please respect that time. And of course, we know that my mom did not respect that time. 
my, my mother called me right away and I didn't realize it until, you know, afterwards, but I remembered her, her, um, there was like a, like a, it's, it seemed like a nervousness in her, in her tone. Um, and she was just begging me not to leave yet. She wasn't forbidding me. She wasn't, you know, at this point I'm, I'm grown. So <laughs> she wasn't trying to tell me what to do, but she was just begging me not to leave yet. And, um, you know, I, I, I prayed about it and I said, all right, honor your father and your mother and the Lord. And I, and I, 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 I was obedient to her not knowing that only a few months later she would be diagnosed with cancer. I believe strongly that the Lord was preparing her and talking to her about transitions prior to her even finding out she was sick. That's just my belief. I'm, I'm, I'm not a prophet or anything like that, so I won't tell you the Holy Spirit did, but um, I believe that she she knew that if I had left when I had planned to leave, it it wouldn't have been, it would have been even more difficult. Uh, I, I'll say that. So I, I want to, I, I thank Pastor uh, Wilby for um, taking that moment to honor her uh, because I really, um, I'm really grateful to my parents. Uh, for instilling in Odin and I um, something that you can't put a price on. You 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 uh, you can't you can't purchase this. Um, we know God because our parents taught us about Jesus, and I know uh, I know His voice because my parents know His voice. And it it is very it was very much um, evident in my growing up and just seeing my parents and seeing the example that they uh, led for us. Um, so I want to take that time to just say thank you to my parents and just honor them um, and say that I, I I appreciate you I appreciate you I love you. Um, I feel blessed that I was born into this family, um, and I'm going to wrap this up, but just bear with me, because, yeah, um, I remember Brother Trevor, when I was a kid, um, this is back in the, the, the greenish blue carpet, uh, storefront born again church days um i remember it was sunday night and i guess i might have been like sitting down and i might have been moving my hands like like uh like in in, in the way that a drummer would and uh Dijon was actually on the drums and i remember brother trevor made it his his point to make sure that Dijon and i shared <laughs> playing time because he saw uh, something in me and something in, you know, Dijon that we were, you know, very much interested in uh, playing in church. And um, I don't take things like that lightly because um, when people see something in you and they invest in you and they, and they, they love on you in that way, it really helps you to, to blossom, it helps you to grow in the gifting that God put in you. And I, I'm saying that because Born Again, the Born Again Church family has been a tremendous blessing to me. Has They have been, you have been um, such a, such an encouragement for me. I don't have, like, I talk to a lot of PKs, preachers kids, I really don't have uh, a lot of those horror stories that you hear, unfortunately, you know, about other uh, 
young people growing up in church and their experience. You know, I'm not being insensitive to anybody's experience, but Born Again has been nothing but good to me. Um, you all have shown me love from day one, you know, and you continue to. Um, I will never forget uh, the love that I have experienced here at Born Again. I will never forget the the, the prayers. I will never forget, you know, people like Sister Nadine and Auntie Yvonne and, you know, Uncle Tony. There's people who just come over and just lay hands on you. Don't even know what you're going through. But would just be obedient to the Holy Spirit and just come over and just pray for you and come up to you after church and, you know, just joke and laugh and have encouraging words and sometimes even chastise and, you know, tough love and, you know, y'all know I can be tardy and stuff like that. I'm, Sister Nepal used to tell me, listen, you have to stop this, man. You have to stop this late stuff. And um, I, all of it, I appreciate and I, and I, I love all of it. Um, this is my, this is my family. This is my home. Uh, no matter where uh, Christine and I go, one again will always be my home. Um, and I will never uh, take that lightly. I'll take it for granted. My mom used to say, uh, cuss where you're going or cuss where you come from. Because <laughs> you came from me. And I think that is so, like, it's so real. Like, you really, I, I don't even have a, a I, even if I felt like I had a negative thing to say, I don't have a, I don't have one negative thing to say about this one game film. Like, honestly, it, it's, we may be small in number, but the love is huge at Born Again. So, um, yeah, I, I, this is hard for me. It really is. It's not like an easy decision, but I'm going to wrap this up right now. Because um, I've taken up enough time, and I don't want the service to be about me leaving. Uh, but I definitely just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I have my wife and myself. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much you. for showing my wife the kind of love that you guys showing her as well. Um, the short time that she's been here. Um, yes, on again. I mean, half of y'all are, are my blood family, so y'all gonna see me anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna be at your house eating your food and gonna barbecue, and, and we're gonna still be family. It's just, um, it's, it's time. Amen. That's it. <laughs> And uh, God bless you guys. I love you very, very much. Thank you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I won't cry. <laughs> Amen. Well, I, unlike many people, I listen to some songs and say, don't you feel like crying? Yes. Oh, yeah, man. Don't you feel like crying? But thank you to God. Let's slip out of that and let's pray for our word this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. And Alvin, good to see you, Alvin. Uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing that under that mask is somebody that I should know. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. God bless all of the visitors that are with us this morning. Amen. We're praying for those who are going through this time of bereavement. Uh, my Rafael advised me that, you know, you'll be going to Jamaica soon. Amen. Aunt of the family has died. Amen. She has been here a few times, so... You know, you would have known her, but she passed away and the funeral arrangements are being set and the Rafael and I think some other members of the family are going to be going to Jamaica to see to her burial. Amen? Yeah. Sister Shideen has an aunt, very special to her. She just came back from Jamaica to bury her grandmother who was like their tower, Lady and 
whom their life was extinguished. So it's, it's a rough time for many people. Nonetheless, we serve a God who knows that. Can I, can I tell you that he knows what you're going through? He knows how you are hurting. He understands just how your heart has been broken. But there's something that nobody else can do like he does. He'll do it again. He will undergird you with strength. He will undergird you with love. As a matter of fact, one of the things that God classified the Holy Ghost as is a comforter. Praise the Lord. Uh, somebody called him the Paracletus. He goes along beside you. He's with you in all of what you're going through. And, 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 and some, some people call him the yoke fellow, which means that if, if you are yoked to a, a particular task, he, he's right beside you. I, I kind of want to modify that, that he's pulling most of the weight. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. That's why we are able to go through our situation sometimes. And when we get over on the other side, some folks may wonder. They don't understand. But God, they know shut up. But God, yes. but God, but God, but God, amen. Maybe I'll preach that message one day, the but God in your life. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord, B-U-T, but God, the conjunction, yes. but God, yes. amen. A lot of situations precede that book. A lot, lot, lot of situations. Yours that you're going through right now. But God. <laughs> oh. mm. See, our situation doesn't determine what God does. So on the other side of this conjunction, but God. Amen. I can, I can hear Job says, now I know. <laughs> now know I, yes. Now know I, because my eyes have now seen. He, he, he was talking merely out of faith. Job's chapter, on, it's on the grid, it stands on the platform of faith. But at the end of the chapter, he says, no, I can see. Oh, praise the Lord. Hmm. In retrospect, that God is good. Yes, sir. He's a good God. He's a good God. Somebody ought to be. I feel like somebody in here knows what I'm talking about to say hallelujah. Because our God is a good God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm preaching this morning and I hope to be able to get out of this within a reasonable time not to take you into my lengthy usual <laughs> deliberation but I think I'm improving <laughs> and hopefully we'll be able to show you amen by example that that is the case <laughs> praise you the Lord Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 is where our text is coming from this morning. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Somebody on Facebook heard the word from the Bible, not what I have to say. Your infirmities, our infirmities. But was it all points? Every, all Stop. points. Amen. Tempted like as we are. That yes. means if you feel ick, whatever it is, God made himself or took on himself the flesh so that he could know how to feel pain. Amen. 
yet without sin. And so the writer of the Hebrews, some people think it's Paul who wrote the book of Hebrews, others have doubts because it is not clearly established. Amen, that Paul was the writer, but it sounds like Paul. Let us dear voices come boldly because of this, he says. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain, number one, mercy, and find grace, because you're going to need it, in time of need. Find grace to help in time. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. Oh God, you you are the one that made us. You know exactly where we are this morning. You know what we need, Lord. Your words have clearly spoken to us that you can be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. So God, we come to you this morning asking that you Oh God, speak to our hearts. Oh God, I know you want to speak. So let, let, let our mouths speak for you this morning. Use us, God. Anoint us, God. Sanctify us, God. Yes, hallelujah. Give us clarity of thoughts, God. Give us, oh God, the power of the Holy Ghost this morning so that we can speak a word of life to somebody that needs to hear a word of life this morning in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I can bless you this morning everywhere I find that if I call this message come boldly it ought to pick on a string of happiness or boldness or excitement. excitement, thank you. And those that are here this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is an extension of an invitation that tells you you don't have to worry but just come. Yes. Without reservation. Uh, don't watch the face. Come. Boldly. Don't be intimidated. Suggest to me then that there are a lot of things that are in every life. All of us. Maybe you don't feel so, but live long and you will find out. That would have prevented us or disqualified us yeah. from coming. Right. Oh God. <laughs> oh, I was polluted. The Bible said that, uh, you know, some of us were polluted. Yeah, and and that, that's a, a, a figure of speech. Figuratively, we were, we were, we were messed up. But God saw you in that mess. But he's extending anyhow an invitation that tells you that though you are in your mess, you can come. Yes, right. Tells me that this is a God of understanding. This is a God of compassion. This is a God that knows just what you need or what I need and so <laughs> uh, when we would have wallowed in our mess and, and then and be discouraged at coming he, he speaks a word of encouragement to lift you from the quagmires or wherever you are this morning and take a bold step to come to him yeah, yeah, yeah. the writer speaks in the latter verses of the chapter because when you go through 
through the entire chapter, you would find that he now looks at two main characters in that particular scripture. He looks at Moses with the children of Israel, yeah. and he looks at Jesus. And there are similarities with Jesus and with Moses. Number one, Moses was born in kingliness. He was born in the best place, or he was, he was raised rather, in the best place in Egypt. He was raised in Pharaoh's palace. Even though he was born in obscurity, he was raised in the best place in Egypt. He was raised to become a pharaoh. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. He had all of the qualification to do otherwise. Praise the Lord. But there was a set of people that were now being enslaved and, and were treated like underdogs that needed a savior. <laughs> that needed somebody that could stand in the gap and allow God to use them for the deliverance of those that are captive. Oh, I think I hear Jesus said he was come to set captivity captive and to set a liberty them that are bruised. That's the similarity with Jesus and Moses. And so Moses said, I'd rather participate in what my people are going through than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Oh God, hallelujah. So he stepped down where they were. And so when you look at the similarity, of Jesus. He stepped out of glory. Oh, he stepped out of heaven. He stepped out of his majesty. Oh, hallelujah. And he came down to where uh, they couldn't find room for him to be born. Oh, he passed by Herod's palace. He passed by the final edifices of the time and found himself in a stable to be born to signify to you this morning that he's willing and ready to come down where you are and, and rub shoulders with you in your situation because he's come to take you to a higher level oh god the bible said that he humbled himself he was obedient even to the death of the cross. Oh God. And when God did that, because don't you know that he was God in flesh. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. So when God did that, God felt good that God did that. So he gave himself a pat on the shoulder and said, ah, God has given him a name that is above him. Every other name, that at the name of Jesus, yeah, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess. You see, when we use the name of Jesus, we are just only using an identification because many people in the Bronx has the same spelling. But when we use the name of Jesus, there's something about that name. That name Every knee shall bow. Hallelujah. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. To the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. 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 
Now, if you read the entire chapter, the writer is careful. He says, let us fear. Lest we fall into the same predicament. You know, because here what? Moses gave up his status to help the people. But they turned their back on him. Oh, praise the Lord. Jesus. <laughs> he, he had to be like Jesus. Because God made, made him an offer. And people, you know, sometimes when you look at certain things and, and, and listen to certain people, they assess God as being a wicked God. Mm -hmm. You know, because God now speaks to Moses and says, Step out of the way. All of those people who will not listen, I have the ability to do away with them. In other words, if you're not good for God, God has the ability to dispose of them. You know what we do with things that are disposable? When they are not good anymore, we throw them out. And you, you, you might say, but God is harsh, and, and God is hard. But we, we, if you really check ourselves, every person, no matter how they will pre present a different face, every person that is made by God, we are made as worshippers. That's right. That's right. If you don't worship God, you worship yourself. You, 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 talk, you talk to those who are atheists and, and see who they worship themselves. Because they can't see anybody else but themselves. They can't understand that there's a God within charge. Oh, but they have deprived themselves. Because, Brother Tony, I was thinking about that this week. You know, every one of us, we are so complicated. I mean, complex. <laughs> Both physically, biologically, we are complex. Mentally, or emotionally, or whatever way you want to see, we are very complicated, one of us. And eight billion of us live on the planet. Amen. And we have a God who manages all eight billion of us. Yes, sir. It has to be a great God. Yes, in control. He's in control. Right. Hallelujah. And so, so when I think about great years and, and how awesome this God is, oh, I tell myself, oh, like Abraham said, I'm just a worm. I'm nobody if I don't have God. I want this God who has the ability to say, let there be. And it happens. I want this God who is able to hold the word in his hand to hold my. Oh, I want this God who is great and greatly to be praised to be my God. Amen. That's why I praise him. That's why I praise him. Oh, hallelujah. Don't, don't you know, those of us who know how to praise God, that, that when, when we praise him and get to that spirit of praise, uh, he takes us into a realm of glory that nothing else can. Oh, praise ye the Lord. If you want the joy of the Lord, if you want to feel happy, if you want your soul to experience the ecstasy that comes with the presence of Almighty God, you've got to snap out of yourself. Forget about yourself. Let God step into the presence of God. Because whenever you get into the presence of God, the Bible said it is present. There's fullness of joy. And that is right hand. There are pledges for a moment. He's like Jesus. And, and so the writer wants to make sure now that what happened to the children of Israel don't happen to us. Amen. But even though God makes himself available to them, open up Red Sea. That really needs to be explained. 
for Moses was able to survive because all the people knew is the act of God. And if you only serve God when God can open up the Red Sea, it's not going to happen all the time. It's not going to happen all the time. But I want to tell you, those of us who have a relationship with God, when we come to the Red Sea and the Red Sea doesn't even look, look like it's, it's, it's going to happen, we know how to start giving God praise. Oh, hallelujah. I want to tell you something. I, 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 that came to me when, when I was, was, was you know, on my knees and I was actually on my face and God pulled me up and said, stand up and read, and read this one. Read what, what happened to Moses. Because Moses had a testimony that God is able. And God said, use what you have. When you come upon your situation, you have to have a testimony. You have to have something that you know about God and the ability of God so you can look at your situation and stretch out what you know about God. The rod that is stretched out was a rod that God used to show him that he can change a dead situation and make some life into it. Oh, hallelujah. The hand that he used was a hand that was left Say, just put it in your book one more time. Oh, somebody need to put something into God's hand one more time. Hey, hey, whatever's going through this morning, put it into the hand of God one more time. Hey, oh, hey, oh, come on, come on. Mm. When you're about to experience, you can, you know where to go. If you have experienced God before, you know where to go. Come boldly. Ah, hallelujah. Put your hand in the hand of God one more time. That same hand was brand spanking him. I feel like God's about to do that for somebody. Somebody on Zoom this morning. Somebody on Facebook. God's about to take your morning and turn it into dancing. God's about to take off your sackcloth and he's about to gird you with gladness. God is about to give you the joy. Oh, hallelujah. The joy that's going to lift you up. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. One of the things that underpin Hallelujah. The strength of this word this morning is God's personal involvement. Yes. It's characteristic. See, you know, the sales pitch is powerful when you can tell somebody, I'm selling you the barbecue stuff because I have one at my house. Yes. But that's just sales gimmicks. I'm not talking about the real stuff. Yes. Somebody who doesn't have to really make up stuff uh -huh. to sell you stuff. Yes. You see, what God has to offer, yes. God doesn't have to fix it up. Yes. I'll stop it up. Yeah. He just needs to get into your mind yes. and open up your spirit and, yes. and allow you to see what He has to give you. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. And one of the things that God gets into the situation himself. Oh, what Paul says, for we have not an high priest. You know, there's some people who theoretically they can tell you how to do the thing. But Jesus is an high priest that can tell you how you feel. Oh, hallelujah. I said, Jesus is a, is a high priest that can tell you what you're going through. Jesus is a high priest that can tell you that you're hurting. Oh, and he can understand how what you are going through. He can understand how much you are, you are, you are feeling this morning because he was, he, he was tempted like as we are. But God made himself participant in the thing. That you and I must go through. Yeah. And so he says this morning, come boldly. Oh, hell. Come boldly with your reservation. Come and, and if 
if anybody wants to stop you, just be like the woman with the issue of blood. Hey, hallelujah. She said, if I could only but touch her, the hem of its garment. Oh, hallelujah. She had the circumstances in front of her. She had people that represented everything that could stop her. Oh, but she said, if I only this morning, And said, woman, go sit down. Don't you know that people know what you're going through? But she said, I'm going to push anyway. I'm going to push anyway. I'm going to push anyway. She came boldly. And she touched the hem of his God. Can I wrap it up here? The Bible said that Jesus now, who seemingly was concerned about where he was going and the, the thing that would happen next, suddenly felt virtue left him. Oh, God of mercy. You have a touch this morning that can summon God, not stop God in his track and get his full attention. Oh God, can I make it clearer? Can I make it clearer? That if you can come through your situation boldly, you can get God's attention. Practical, it can be no more. Because the woman, as soon as she touched Jesus, See, you can get God's attention by calling him. But maybe if she had called him, blind Bartimaeus did that and got Jesus' attention. But this woman used a, a finger or a hand to touch him. You know, have you ever been there where you feel like the person... He's so preoccupied that you have to touch them and shake them and make them know that you need them. Yes. Yeah. That's what she did. She touched them. And Jesus said, virtue has left me. So hey, touch me. Hallelujah. You see, your touch to Jesus might not be understood by others. Because the disciples said so many people were here. And you're asking who touched you. Jesus said something about this one. Yeah. It's a different touch. Yeah. Oh God. Mm. Feel like somebody has a touch that, oh, that that's above somebody else's touch this morning. Yeah. Uh, somebody has a touch this morning. A touch of me this morning. Yeah. Jesus said Thank you, Jesus. response to that touch. I need to talk about it. Hey, God. You see, probably before she got her healing, she would hide when Jesus said, Who touch? But when you know, because you can say anything you want to say, but I know that Jesus did something for you. You can, you, 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 can, you can give me all of the philosophy all of the argument about God. But I know what I know about the ability of God. Because I touch him. And that thing that I was carrying for many years. Oh God. <laughs> As immediately ceased. God, what a touch. Immediate seizure. 
of my problem that has been going on for a long time. My calamity, immediate stop to my persecution, immediate stop to my hurtings. Oh God, Jesus said, Lady, guess what? Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. You see, faith is spelled F A I T. She had faith. The word F there, you could say, she was forceful. Amen. So she could work her way through the crowd. For work is force move through a distance. You can have all the force you have, but you have to move it. You have to work it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So she worked her way through the crowd. She moved through the distance. Hallelujah. And that force moved through a distance, brought her in close proximity to Jesus. I is for indulgence. Uh, a, she had an attitude. Amen. Mm. Your attitude will determine your attitude. Oh, hallelujah. If the plane wants to get to another altitude, it has to change its attitude. <laughs> if you want to get bigger and higher in God, can I summon you this morning? You need to change your attitude. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have an attitude of humility. You gotta have an attitude that understands that God's above everybody else. You gotta have, a, have an attitude of who God is. So this lady had an attitude. <laughs> what an attitude that was. <laughs> Boy, I, I, I don't care. I, I, I don't, it doesn't matter who you are. My attitude, you might not like it, but I am putting myself in a position to elevate myself into the presence of Jesus. Amen. Indulgence. I, hallelujah. She, she indulged herself with it. She stepped into it. Yes. You know, she didn't she did touch the water with her foot and step back. Oh, she stepped fully, submerged herself into the experience. Oh God, I, I can't understand how you come into the presence of the Lord and just want to just, you know, sit back and, and not let like, go. Oh, I think Jacob, when he, when, he, when he got into that presence, he said, God was here and I did not know it. And God changed his name in that situation. Anybody who gets into that presence with good attitude, you have to leave it with a change. Amen. Right. I said you have to leave it to the change. Right. Indulge yourself in, in worship. Indulge yourself in, in just understanding God for who he is to you. When I think of his goodness and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. And I like our touch. <laughs> for shuckled by a heavy burden. Is for touch. Meet the load of guilt and care. Yes. But the hand of Jesus touched me. And now I am no longer the same. Just to be clear, she had a touch, which is what he. But when you touch Jesus, he doesn't allow you alone to touch him. He's going to touch you too. Oh, he's going to give you a return touch. Oh, hallelujah. He touched me. Oh, and all I know, he touched me. And I'm no longer the same. Oh, what age there is for the hem. For the hem was no ordinary hem. The hem was the hem of God's garment. And if I could only but touch, I Somebody under the 
sound of my voice this morning need to understand that you have the faith, you have the force, you have the attitude, you have the intelligence, you have the touch, and you have the hand of Almighty God. You might just need a healing. But the woman, Jesus said, your faith take care of everything. That's right, man. A little bit further. Thy faith has made you whole. She came with a touch to stop the hemorrhage. But Jesus' response to her was that her faith has given to her accessibility. Her boldness to the throne has given her accessibility to the resources of God. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, God gave it. And he gave it. So, as we prepare this morning to close, we would not do you justice if we would pray for your deliverance this morning. Because I believe God is right beside you. Yes. Oh. Yes, right beside you. Somebody say, touch me again, Lord. Each moment I feel like a fresh touch I need. Oh, touch me again, Lord. Oh, touch me again. Lift your hands wherever you are this morning. Just remember that if you need salvation, he has purchased that with his own blood. Hallelujah. If you are needing of healing this morning, by his stripes, it is paid in full. Just pick it up. Just pick it up. As you enter into the presence of God. Uh, if you need a door to be open, we have record of those that open on their own accord. Yes, you don't have to see how they get open, but God has opened them up for you, and then He can break the, the chains that bind you. Hey, God! Hallelujah! Oh, God! Your life can be totally different. 
because you know that God has given you an invitation to a new experience this morning. Father, we thank you this morning. Oh, Almighty God, I believe this. I believe this, God. We thank you this morning that somebody somewhere this morning the word God and, and, has, and has stepped out in faith this morning and because you oh God said your word will not return void in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus whatever that situation is we declare it oh God that healing that that person needs this morning we declare it that salvation that that person needs this morning Whoever they are, we can't see them, but you can. Hallelujah. It is done, and God be praised. Let God arise. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, please gather. Let's stand all over this place this morning as we thank God for somebody. Hey, maybe there's somebody in the house this morning that need to come. Oh, if you feel like you need to come and be prayed for this morning. Oh, just feel free. Step out, and God said, come boldly. The throne of grace. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God this morning. Thank you, Jesus.
they said we shouldn't, whatever. But this morning, I just feel like we need to really just touch each other this morning. Let us pray for each other this morning, right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Thank you. 